Keyline is a holistic design system, which again looks to restoring the vitality of landscapes with soil and water as foundations and topography as the guide. There's a implement that Yeomans developed, which is a type of subsoil plow called the Keyline plow or the Yeomans plow. You can Keyline plow and not use a Keyline plow because the Keyline plow is basically just like a brand of subsoiler. And a subsoiler is a tractor drawn implement that has shanks that almost look like a flattened version of your lower leg that get dropped in the soil and pulled through the ground and basically help relieve compaction. They loosen up the soil, they fluff it up, and they create channels of infiltration for water. They also make it easier for roots to penetrate. So it's a way of undoing soil compaction and also creating these kind of interruptions along slopes or in the landscape to try to help infiltrate water. Soil compaction can be a major limiting factor on farmland and a lot of our farm landscapes have suffered from compaction just due to machine use and overgrazing over time. So the idea is just making it easier for plant roots to grow and water to infiltrate into the soil. And so the key line plow is, is a type of plow used, it doesn't turn the soil over, it basically just unzips the ground below. Um, but again, you can use any type of subsoiler to try to do the same work. You don't need the key line plow. The key line plow is just a well-designed version of a subsoiler. It doesn't require as much horsepower to pull as many other subsoilers, and it tends to do a much cleaner job. Um, it doesn't create as much soil mixing and as much disturbance on the surface. So you're not trying to sink this thing as deep as you can go on pass one. Usually what I learned is to dig some test pits and see how deep is the topsoil, how deep are plant roots growing. I also have a soil penetrometer which measures compaction or resistance. And so you can basically see how much resistance is there by pushing this probe with a pressure gauge into the soil. That's another guide. They say beyond about 300 PSI, plant roots struggle to grow. So you can basically find out like where is that initial restrictive layer. And often on my first passes, I've gone like eight to 12 inches deep. And then subsequently following with deeper passes to the point where the tool has gone to full depth and hopefully you've addressed that problem at least for some period of time. The idea is that water naturally wants to concentrate in the valleys because valleys are concave basins. Water's naturally being directed down to those shapes and concentrating, whereas the ridges tend to be more dry and exposed because water is running off of those shapes. And so the goal with Keyline is to even out the moisture distribution across the site so that we're draining valleys out toward ridges, directing that water more evenly. So we're not moving water from valley uphill to ridge. We're moving water from valley downslope out to a ridge. And once you pick one primary pattern, everything else is parallel to that. And the, the directive of the pattern is again to kind of draw water out toward the ridges. So you're not trying to spread it evenly across the site, you're trying to disperse it. And you're also going to get symmetrical spacing so that if the rows are 30 feet apart, they're going to be 30 feet apart all along the entirety of the row. We'll contrast that with contour patterning, which would be perfectly level across the landscape. So that's just capturing water where it moves. One of the downsides to contour as a pattern when compared to key line is that with perfectly level row lines, the, the spacing between the rows is gonna tend to vary. So if we started off with this line and then did another contour line above it, what we're gonna find is that where it's steeper, the line's gonna get closer together and where things start to flatten, the lines get further apart. And so you have this asymmetry in your patterning that can be a challenge when it comes to management. So I tend to try to frame it that way more so, is what's the objective rather than the prescriptive pattern? Because for a lot of people, they don't necessarily have these shapes where it's as legible. 
The main theme is just, again, looking to topography to guide the patterning of our planting or the placement of our roads or other infrastructure.